I, I differ is, uh, uh, first of all, as a molecular biologist and a scientist, I, I do tend to take a, a not pessimistic, but critical view of things. And if something has never been done before, I don't say it can't be done, but I, I, I say you can't assume that it can be done. You certainly can't assume a time frame over which it can be done. So I, I think that the, the strategies that, that Aubrey is, is outlining to basically uh, uh, repair damage, to put it in a nutshell, is not how as a scientist I would go about the problem. If my goal were, and, and by the way, I agree with also with what, what Aubrey said about uh, calorie restriction. I think uh, what we're doing is we're leveraging something that's already evolved. And, that, and I think that makes, but I, I tend to have to take the opposite spin. I think that makes a great deal of sense because it's there, we, right. should, it, we should take it. And, sure, uh, it certainly means that it's going to be very much easier to do what you're trying to exactly. do than what you, I'm trying to do. You have a chance So success. I definitely regard the manipulation and exploitation of the phenomenon of calorie restriction, using drugs or whatever, as essentially a bridge to the sort of much more ambitious yeah. but possibly much more effective yeah. work. So the calorie-restricted rodents do age and they do die. It's just slower and, and, it, and it takes longer. But I would, as, as a scientist, think I would begin to think about Michael showed uh, the sea creature that doesn't age. Maybe we should start to try to understand organisms that, that don't show any aging. And how, do, how do they do it? And one Take of the things they have point. in common, Lenny, is they don't get cancer. I mean, uh -huh. this is a, a recurring theme. Those very, very, those outliers, even naked mole rats who do age and die, <clears throat> but have enormous lifespans, mm -hmm. they don't get cancer. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree, cancer is an issue. The other thing I think about is if you think of our species, okay, we, we reproduce, and our children reproduce, and so on and so on and so on. And that means that every uh, uh, newborn has to be born the same age, and that is age zero. And that means that the germ cells that gave rise to that newborn, born the sperm <coughs> and the egg, cannot have undergone any aging at all. So that when you form that new uh, 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 embryo, it's, it's purged of any, any of the detritus of aging. And so I think that there's a place to look then is in the germ cells to see, are there mechanisms that germ cells uh, use? Oocytes have to uh, they exist at birth, and uh, they, they have to sit around until sexual maturity. That's 20, 30 years. Are there mechanisms there that, again, evolved? Mm -hmm. And so we're, again, leveraging mechanisms that evolved. And in the case of the oocyte, of course, uh, there you're really stopping aging. Because even if you had a tiny bit of aging every generation, the species would senesce. Mm -hmm. So again, I, my, as a scientist, I sort of look for what, you know, what, what can we take advantage of mm -hmm. that's there that takes the problem and cuts it down to size.